الحمد لله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعلى محمد وعلى صلى الله عليه وسلم سبت هذا تعليه عليه السلام أو علي سل يور شيلد and from now on I will be your shield. Hazrat Zainab in Karbala was the shield for the children. Now Islam is in danger. For all of us who want to be a shield for Islam, please send a loud salawat. Verse 41, Allah says, The topic of my speech today is about Homs. I'm sure many of you know and have seen <clears throat> that many people don't pay their funds. And I'm not talking about Christians, or Jews, or Zoroastrians, or even Sunnis. I'm talking about Shias, followers of the Ahlul Bayt, not paying their funds. Things I often hear people say, because you would wonder why they don't pay their funds. At the end of the day, it's, it's not that they don't believe in it, they do believe in it. Everybody knows we're meant to pay our funds. So why don't they? Well, some of the things I often hear people say, first of all, is we already have to pay income tax and council tax and VAT. We don't need another tax to pay. Or, for example, I can't afford to pay funds. We're in an economic crisis, there's a credit crunch going on, there's so many bills to be paying and stuff like that. We just don't have the money to pay homes. Or people even say things like, I gave my homes to this island last year, and he went and bought such and such thing with it. He didn't spend it how it was meant to be spent. Now, inshallah, I'd like to address these topics one by one. Tax. Homs is a tax from God. It's God's tax upon us. It's not a government tax. The difference between Homs and a government tax is that Homs goes to help the people in need. Also, when you pay your Homs, you're investing in your afterlife. The difference between Homs and the government tax is that if you don't pay the government tax, then they'll come and get it off you with force. But if you don't pay Homs, they won't get it off you with force. God won't come and get it off, with you, off you with force. But you'll have to answer for it in the next time. Some people say they can't afford to pay Homs. وَأَلَمُوا أَنَّمَا غَنِمْتُمْ And know that from that thing which you gain. What does God mean from that thing which you gain? God's saying that after you've paid your bills and you've spent money on food and household things and you've sent your kids to school, you've been out for leisure, you've been on holiday, even when you bought people gifts, after all of this, the money that's left that you really, really don't need, God says a fifth of it is for him. Not all of it, a fifth of it. <coughs> Let me explain this in a bit more detail. Let's say you earn £20,000 a year, for example, and after you, all of your expenses in that year, you've lived life for that one year, you see you've got 2000 left in your account. Of that 2000 a fifth of it is for God. That money you really don't need. God's not saying to give all of your extra money. He's saying give a tiny amount of your extra money. And if you ask anybody that does pay their funds, they'll tell you that shortly after they pay it, they see that this money, either this amount or more, comes to them from somewhere completely unexpected, that they didn't even expect it. This is God saying thank you.
حالا ما Somebody once was very angry and they came to me saying that my homes last year came to 500 pounds and I went to the island that I thought I should give my homes to and I gave it to him and we sat there talking for about half an hour. After half an hour I got up to leave, I got in my car, he saw me get in my car, so I drove down the road, coming back on my way back, I see he walks into Akram's kebab shop. He goes and buys two big donai kebabs with chips and starts sitting there nom, 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 eating it. I have a mouth too, I have a stomach too, Why, how come he gets to buy this with, with my khoms money? Why can't I do it? You know what? I'm not going to pay khoms. I'll just spend it on myself. Respected brother, first of all, you shouldn't be upset because you've done your duty. This is off your shoulders now. It's on his shoulders. So God won't ask you about this anymore. If he does ask you, then the answer is that you gave it to the person and he accepted responsibility. The second point is that how do you know that he didn't buy that with his own money? How do you know that that wasn't his own money he bought it with? How do you know it was your comms money? Sometimes we suspect a lot of things. And the third and final point about this is that everybody look at their hands. Look at your hands. You see your fingers, they're not the same. They're not all the same. They're different. And it's the same with ulama. Ulama aren't all the same. You get your good ones and you get your not so trustworthy ones. So find the mushnah that you can trust and give it to them. <coughs> now before I go on about the benefits of giving comps, because this was just this was just debating with the people who say they don't want to give it. Before I go on about the benefits, I'd like to give a short story about someone about um, managing our money and and using our money how it's meant to be used. <coughs> At the time of Prophet Muhammad <laughs> At the time of Prophet Muhammad, there was a man called Fatlava. He was a companion of the Prophet. And I'm sure many of you have heard this story before, but I'll say it again for those that don't have it. This man called Fatlava was a companion of the Prophet and he was quite poor as well. Um, he, he was very religious. He always used to be in the front queue, at uh, the front line of the Namaz al Jamaat, and he always was there for Salat al Sob, Salat al Zor, and Salat al for all of them. He was there. Um, now, one day, he sat down with the Prophet, <coughs> and he told the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah, you know that, you know my situation, I'm not that well off. I'd like to stand on my own two feet. So, will you lend me some money, will you give me some money to start my own business, to start working for myself? So, the Prophet turns around and says, no problem. And he gives him two dirhams to start his business. This man starts his business. Um, within no time, he's made loads of money, he's bought loads of sheep. <coughs> but as time went on, the Prophet saw that that lover was no longer on the front line of the Jama'at. No. He was in the back lines. And more time went on and more time went on. And we saw that that Laba stopped coming to the Jama'at altogether. Eventually the Prophet would only see him once or twice a year. Sometime after that, the ayahs of Homs and Zakat came down. And the Prophet sent a message to that Laba saying, that Laba, these are the ayahs. This is the duty that you have now. <coughs> and the message was taken to that Laba. That Laba opens the message. This is from the Prophet. Oh, it must be important. He reads it. Ah, huh? money? What? Puts it away. <coughs> Completely discards the message. Sometime later, that Laba was in Medina. And he went to see the Prophet. They were like, how are you? How's things going? And the Prophet said to him, I, I know that you're not paying your khums and your zakat. And, you know, I'm not going to put any pressure on you to pay it. But can I ask for a favor? Fatlava says, yes. 